The world's 11th largest economy with a GNI per capita of 30,000 US dollars, the miracle of the Han River, Korea set a shining example of economic growth, and here in Seoul is the Chamber, delving deeper into what's happening around the country from an economic perspective. I'm your host, Panita Bajaj. This week we talk about ways to improve business exchanges between Korea and the European Union with Chairman Dmitry Silakis of the European Chamber of Commerce in Korea. So for those of you curious about Korea and what goes on around the world, we are here in Seoul, the economic hub of Northeast Asia. So without further ado, let's step into the chamber. Well, joining us here on the show today, we have Chairman Dmitry Psilakis of the European Chamber of Commerce in Korea, otherwise known as the ECCK. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. It's my pleasure. Thank well, you. you are a man of many hats, uh, you know, dipping your finger into many different fields, and you are part of the Chamber of Commerce in Korea for the European Union. Now, um, the EU and Korea has signed a free trade agreement back in 2011 and the bilateral trade volume has increased significantly since then. We're talking over 112 US billion dollars or 99 billion euros um, as of 2017. So I'm sure that this FTA has led to more opportunities for European investors wanting to enter the Korean market. And of course, the bridging role of the ECCK might have become more significant, more important accordingly. Can you tell us how that process has been like? I think the uh, free trade agreement, which was signed in 2011, opened new doors and new opportunities, both for Korean companies, but also for European companies uh, working on, on, on the two sides. Uh, the important thing is that uh, since then, the trade between the two uh, uh, regions has grown uh, tremendously. Every year has been growing, reaching the level of what you said, about 100 billion uh, uh, euros. But most important is that the trade between uh, the two sides is very balanced. So we see more or less 50 on one side and 50 on the other side, which shows that this free trade agreement uh, helped prosper uh, both Korea but also uh, Europe. Uh, more important than that is uh, Europe is playing a very strong role for Korea as it is the uh, first inverse investor in Korea. Uh, about nine uh, billion dollars uh, was the uh, FDI uh, direct investment of, of last year, which is significant value, placing Europe in number one position when it comes to investing in Korea. Right. I mean, we've had uh, quite a few chambers here on the show as well, and we talked with, you know, the FKCC and uh, along with uh, with Spain as well, and most of them say, along with what you say, that it has grown exponentially throughout the years. More and more people are interested in Korea and vice versa as well. And the ECC the ECCK holds 350 active member companies, that, which represent over 50,000 employees, sales reaching 71 trillion won, including, of course, Mercedes-Benz, where you are serving as president and chief executive over in that department. So what kind of impact do you think uh, that has on the Korean market? I think the, the impact is, is big and the impact is growing. And I would split it in, in, in two sides, on a quantitative impact and a qualitative impact. Okay. When it comes to the quantitative side, yes, we create jobs, uh, 50,000 jobs 
significant uh, over the last uh, uh, years. Uh, creating a revenue of 70 trillion Korean won is also uh, significant, uh, but more than that is all about duties, taxes, corporate income tax, um, uh, which we're paying here. On the other hand, when you look on the, on the quality of these um, uh, investments, uh, I think the European companies uh, are bringing into Korea different uh, business model uh, are bringing into Korea gender diversity when it comes to, 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 to uh, employees, is bringing different corporate governance, uh, uh, different to what Chebols uh, have um, uh, in Korea. Um, so all in all, it's contributing to the development and I would say to internationalization of doing business in Korea. This is a parameter very important because at the end of the day, Korea is very much an export economy. And many of the companies are uh, working, of course, abroad, outside or exporting or have subsidiaries. The, the European companies which operate here bring value into economy, bring value into society and help, I would uh, say, uh, the Korean uh, business environment internationalize. Sure, I think diversity is key to any business, whether big or small, and it's certainly opening up a new conversation, whether it is about you know, gender bias or when it comes to race and ethnicity and things of that nature. However, as you said, um, you know, Korea is an export market and it's doing significantly well. And according to a business confidence survey back in 2018, the uh, ECCK released, many European companies highly value the Korean market for their global strategy. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about the survey and its results? What exactly is uh, the thing that they are attracted to the most? Uh, as, as a business association, we, we run every year this business confidence survey in coordination with other uh, chambers of commerce in Korea to get the pulse of, of the people which are doing business uh, in Korea coming from from abroad. I would say uh, there are positive and uh, negative outcomes in this survey. Starting with the positive side, uh, the, the, the business leaders, uh, the foreign business leaders trust Korea and trust the economy in Korea. And we can also see that the majority believes uh, that investing in Korea is a right decision and in future they would continue investing the same amounts or even additional amounts into Korea. This is the positive side. When you look more on what uh, the business leaders are criticizing, I would say it's rather the business climate, uh, it, it, it's rather the um, instability when it comes to new regulation and laws which are coming very uh, um, uh, often ab abruptly and without the necessary uh, consultation. Um, and also there are some concerns on the slowing down of the Korean economy. So these are concerns which we constructively uh, bring forward and discuss with the authorities and with the governments and would like to contribute with ideas of how this can be uh, um, overtaken mm -hmm. so that we as uh, uh, foreign business uh, leaders, we can continue investing and uh, growing our presence in, in, in Korea. Sure, yeah, absolutely. I don't think anybody can truly predict where the economy will go in five years, ten years, let alone what's going to happen tomorrow. It's definitely a dynamic nation. Well, as I briefly mentioned uh, a, a while ago, you've been serving as president and chief executive in Mercedes-Benz Korea since 2015. Now, what do you think are the attractive features of the Korean market? If we can just stay positive and we'll talk about you know, the cons a little bit later. Korea is a very attractive market uh, for us as a company. Uh, first of all, because Korea is a very dynamic market. Korea is changing fast. Korea is adapting to new uh, technologies, uh, adapting and adopting new technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, Korean people, uh, they like and they follow trends. They create trends, I would even say. So for us as a company, entering the Korean markets, testing new products, uh, tapping new uh, trends, it, it's very important. And has proven to be uh, also uh, very successful. So on, on the other hand, Korean customers are also, also very demanding. They're very critical. They look for top quality in the product, but also on the services we're offering. So this is helping us to improve our presence and to get better and better. So all in all, I would say it's a very important market, a developing market uh, for us, and definitely the investments we're taking uh, in Korea in terms of infrastructure for sales and after sales services, but also investments we're taking in terms of developing new technologies and developing new systems, which uh, uh, are developed along with Korean engineers and specialists 
and which are placed in our vehicles for our worldwide uh, production and sales is very significant. Uh, well, investment commitment to Korea from the EU more than doubled, uh, 4.57 billion and a half uh, of 2018. And I'm sure the ECC case bears no effort to expand business relations between Korea and then European companies, especially to meet the growing interest of European companies in the Korean market. Can you tell us um, some of the examples of, of this nature? I would say we work in, in, in two folds. On the one hand, uh, create better conditions for doing business in Korea. Um, and on the other hand, creating opportunities uh, for more companies to to come into Korea or companies from Korea to go out to Europe. And in this sense, uh, I would just quote a couple of examples of, um, of um, conferences uh, we're, we're holding on an annual basis. One of them, for example, is the Europe-Korea Business Forum that uh, we, we take up in Brussels uh, once a year, normally in November, where we present Korea as an attractive business destination, let's say, uh, and we present that to European business associations and, and, and interest groups. On the other hand, looking into Korea, we also have interesting um, conferences like the Korea Europe Future Automotive Forum, where we, we address uh, mobility issues and challenges for the future, uh, or the Europe Korea Innovation Conference, uh, which is very much linked to the efforts uh, that the government is placing towards Industry 4.0 and new technological trends, or the Global Alternative Investment Insights, where we're uh, participating. Uh, so many opportunities where new business opportunities are discussed and trends, future trends of, of economy uh, are being shared between experts. Well, what has been your focus as chairman of the ECCK since you started your tenure back in 2017? Could you share um, some of your efforts to improve Korea's work culture? Doing business is about system, processes, strategy, but it's also or mostly about people. Uh, people you employ, people uh, that uh, are developing and are implementing uh, the strategies. So for us, uh, European companies individually, uh, the effort to bring a work-life balance uh, is very high on our uh, priorities. I would say uh, what we try to bring and what is highly appreciated from, from, from Korean um, uh, employees, which by the way are highly educated, extremely uh, uh, focused, result-oriented, so it's a good base uh, uh, for, for our business. Um, uh, also, we have, I would say, higher diversity, so in many of uh, jobs which have a taboo between men and women, uh, we work much more openly. Um, we have a corporate governance which is uh, totally different to, to most of the traditional uh, Korean companies. Um, there is much more flexibility in the working hours. Uh, and this is, at the end, improving productivity, but also uh, the well-being of our people. And this is what the, our companies, uh, I think, one or the other way, uh, they're, they're doing or implementing. But on a corporate level, uh, what we as CK uh, are doing, uh, we are working very closely also, we're, for example, uh, part of the Korea EU Civil Society Forum, where we discuss with uh, employers, association uh, and unions, ways that um, the relationship between employee and, and, and uh, employers can be improved and can get on, on a higher level. So I would say it's a very important uh, factor and uh, we work very diligently on this direction. Sure. Many foreign companies view Korea as an attractive market, but however, as you talked about briefly before, there is instability, there is sharp rises of uh, uh, regulations, strict uh, regulations that come you know, the night before and things of that nature. So it's not always an easy place to do business. So how can you see Korea's business climate um, by European companies in this country? Um, looking more to uh, the challenging side, I would say the fact that uh, we have an environment where there are too many regulations, uh, regulations which, which many times are deviating from international standards, whether these are European, whether these are US standards, uh, or really international standards, creating, creating some specific Korean standards, mm -hmm. uh, is creating additional bureaucracy, creating additional, uh, I would say, effort and cost which at the end of the day is not productive neither for the European companies nor for the Korean companies. Because we said at the beginning that Korean companies are also 
very much exporting and they're operating in the other markets. Mm -hmm. So the, if the standards are not uh, on the same level, also Korean companies have to make a different efforts for products which are being sold in the local market and products which are sold in, in the European market. So there we would see a, a high chance of, um, uh, let's say, easing off the, 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 the environment or easing off the, the rules of the game, which would definitely add higher competitiveness uh, to, the, to the Korean economy. Right. Meeting somewhere in the middle where right. both sides can right. agree. It may be one of the challenges that European companies find when doing business here in Korea. Well, the ECCK also publishes its white paper, basically to report the actual situation of Korea's regulations with certain key industry issues and suggestions raised by the European business community. So can you tell us what is the purpose for this paper and how do you go about preparing this process? I would say that this uh, white paper, it's our Bible. Uh, <laughs> not, that it's, not that it's a religious uh, document, but it's the, the work uh, of a full year. Uh, and it's, it's based on um, the work which is done in 22 industry uh, committees and working groups that we have. We have more than 100 members coming from our uh, companies uh, and also 20 people, more or less, in uh, ECCK are working behind uh, this uh, white paper. And the approach is to uh, professionalize the demands and the suggestions that we have for the Korean uh, authorities, uh, for the policy makers, uh, what are the terms and what are the, the ideas uh, or recommendations which would improve uh, the, the business climates in Korea, uh, recommendations which would uh, open up opportunities for further investments uh, of uh, European businesses in Korea, uh, what would at the end help the Korean economy prosper further. As I said, it's a very uh, professional approach. It's a deep dive on, 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 on the problems, but also on potential solutions. And for us, it's the basis to discuss. It's the basis to sit around the table with the different parties and debate and bring our experiences uh, from, from, from Europe, uh, bring our suggestions on the table and find uh, a good way of uh, resolving or overcoming challenges. What do you think those challenges can be to attract more foreign investment? I would say, uh, I said it before, on one hand is standardizing more the regulations, uh, harmonizing Korea to the rest of the world, uh, because at the end uh, it's not uh, Asia, it's not uh, Northeast Asia, it's, it's the world that Korea is conquering today. Therefore, it is very important to be open, to let the competition uh, operate in good terms, with a very wide uh, and, and fixed framework, but not playing the game with very strict and, and very, uh, um, uh, I would say, limited uh, conditions, which are also changing very often. Quick changes do not give the time for uh, adaptation, do not give the time for the uh, relatively open and uh, uh, productive consultation. Uh, so it ends up messing the market and, and creating uh, costs and creating uncompetitiveness. Well, you've been, you know, you've been the voice of the ECCK um, kind of representing those companies uh, in the chamber to improve Korea's business landscape with the ECCK paper or the white paper and your participation at the dialogue with President Moon Jae-in, uh, for example. So, I mean, we'd love for you to share with us how your efforts have come to fruition. Uh, I would say uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a long-term uh, work and investment, a long process, right? It's not a <laughs> short-term one. Uh, Korea, you like the pali-pali approach, yes. but uh, in, uh, we need some answers <laughs> exactly. now. Things have to move fast. Yes, we also want to have things moving fast, but in order to have the things sustainably mm -hmm. moving, uh, you need to have a, a, a set of strategy. So from our side, uh, we look far ahead. Looking a little bit to our setup, huh? uh, European uh, chamber in Korea has now uh, almost six years of, of, of presence and, and, and life. Uh, we have a board which is uh, extremely diverse. Uh, our board of directors is uh, consisting of a good diversity when it comes to gender, yes. a good diversity to nationalities when it comes to people. So you have Greek, yeah. you have Germans, you have French, you have British, you have uh, Finnish, Koreans, 
uh, in the world, and we have also a strong diversity of different industry sectors. So that is giving us a very good uh, hold of what is going on uh, in the market, first of all, but also what are the experiences uh, from a cultural point of view from the different members. And this is the board which is deciding on the strategy and on the priorities. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a range just of how many different types, or not how many, but the different types of companies that are within the chamber? Because it could range from you know, education to entertainment. We have from, from pharmaceutical or, or, or chemical uh, um, uh, companies to um, transportation, to logistics, uh, to banking and finance sector, automotive sector. Uh, we have... Um, law firm in, so it's a really a very big diverse, not a single, I would say not a single uh, member of the board, we have nine, nine members, not a single member of the board uh, uh, is working in the same industry as another. Wow. And that has been uh, a prerequisite of when setting up the board, that is CK. But away from that, we have also uh, a team of uh, almost 20 people uh, in ECCK, which is working in the different fields, uh, not only administrative areas, but mostly on the advocacy side. And these are permanent employees which are taking care and coordinating uh, the 22 industry committees and working groups that, that we have. Mm -hmm. And these people together with the members of our companies uh, are working in preparing our um, white paper, for example, or our recommendations. So this is basically the structure which you have put in place to, to, to address the challenges, but at the same time, we are working consistently uh, in promoting our, 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 uh, our points and in creating a climate of collaboration, trust uh, with the relevant authorities uh, in, in the areas that uh, we are working. Um, last but uh, not least, I would say we try to also professionally bring forward our, our, our point. So work with the media. Yes. Good chance we're here with thank you. you. For yeah. <laughs> That's, thank you for giving us the opportunity. Uh, also in constructively promoting uh, uh, our points, mm -hmm. sometimes, yes, criticizing, but with reasons, with sure. arguments, but at the same time, praising good initiatives which are uh, on the direction of promoting business and easing off or creating a good business climate uh, in Korea. Sure, things that need to be done, things that need to be said, must be said. Well, thank you very much. And uh, well, before we wrap up, we always ask this final question. Could you tell us your future plans when it comes to the ECCK as chairman uh, for the active expansion? You know, there's still more room, potential room to be filled of European businesses here in the country? We never stop and we are moving and uh, definitely uh, on one hand we would like to represent more European companies or Korean companies which are doing business in Europe in our chamber. So the effort is to grow further our, our presence. Um, on, on the second term, um, what we're also looking at is to uh, gain further recognition, further trust, uh, and improve our collaboration with the different uh, Korean authorities, whether this association or ministries or um, uh, our, our partners. We have many MOUs who, uh, signed with different partners, uh, regional or, or central government ones, but we want to expand in this direction, gain the trust, and move stronger in a, in a very constructive dialogue, uh, which is supporting uh, both sides. And last but not least, um, uh, we want to, to, to be and, uh, and, and support in, in being the gates of supporting small and medium-sized enterprises uh, coming up, uh, uh, collaborating further with our member companies, but more than that, open the doors for the SMEs to move out to Europe uh, or SMEs from Europe to come down to Korea. So support balanced uh, growth and I would say at the same time a sustainable growth of the, of the business uh, uh, in Korea. Well, thank you very much. As we talked about the role of the European Chamber of Commerce in Korea and the ways to improve Korea's business and clim uh, climate, let's keep an eye on how it does its part to encourage more business relations between Korea and European companies. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Thank you.
Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions or concerns regarding Korea's economy and what goes on around the world, be sure to join us on social media where we'd love to answer your curiosities. Once again, that's all the time we have, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place, on The Chamber. Thank you again. Thank you. That was very fun, yes. Thank you.